now we will look at the other parts of the general virology which includes the inclusion bodies and interference in itself so inclusion bodies now we'll go for the first see the inclusion bodies inclusion bodies are nothing but just the aggregates of the viral proteins either in the cytoplasm or the nucleus of the host cell but this is not solely confined to the viral infections these inclusion bodies may also be seen in some cases of bacterial infection like in case of chlamydial infection we see the inclusion bodies regarding the nature of these inclusion bodies their location also varies so if the if the inclusion bodies if that inclusion bodies is a acidophilic in nature it will preferably be present in the cytoplasm if it is basophilic in nature then it is found in the nucleus so based on that there is various location of the inclusion bodies the inclusion bodies may be found in case of the in cytoplasm in nucleus and both so inclusion bodies may be found in cytoplasm nucleus or at both the sites now so see here we have divided the inclusion body based on the location of the inclusion bodies so first type is the intracytoplasmic inclusion body intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies means the inclusion body is present in the cytoplasm of the host cell and some of the examples of the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies are the negri bodies which are seen in case of the rabies virus infection most commonly in the cytoplasm of the uh, new uh, neurons of hippocampus brainstem and cerebellum passion body is seen in case of the variola virus infection Ga guarnieri body is seen in case of vaccinia virus and molluscum body in case of the molluscum contagiosa virus so these are some of the these are some of the intracytoplasm inclusion bodies which are seen in viral infections next comes the intranuclear inclusion bodies these intranuclear inclusion bodies are divided into two types the type 1 is the type 1 is cowdery type a and type 2 is cowdery type b okay cowdery type a and cowdery type b now cowdery type a inclusion bodies are seen in case of yellow fever virus these are examples which one must should uh, which one should most remember so cavity type A inclusion bodies are seen in case of the yellow fever virus and the herpes simplex virus in which it is called as the lip skulls bodies we will see the lip skulls bodies when we read about the herpes simplex virus in detail next is the cowdery type B that cowdery type B in intranuclear inclusion bodies are seen in case of the polio virus and in case of the adenovirus polio virus and adenovirus now in certain infection only a few handful of infections are there in which both intracytoplasmic and intranuclear inclusion bodies are seen these of which the most important example is the measles virus infection okay measles virus infection in which both the intranuclear as well as the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies are seen and those cells are called as the warthin finken Finkel day cells, Warthin Finkel day cells. So this is again a very important question that Warthin Finkel day cells are found in which infection? So it is found in the measles virus infection. Warthin Finkel day cells are found in the measles virus infection, and also the measles virus infection has the both internuclear and the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. Now what is the composition of these inclusion bodies? The inclusion bodies are generally made up of the viral proteins the proteins which are required for the synthesis of the virus those proteins uh, assemble or aggregate accumulate inside the cell and they give rise to those inclusion bodies what is the significance of the inclusion bodies the as you all know already that the significance of the inclusion bodies is that they are uh, their size location and staining helps in the diagnosis of the particular viral infection that helps in the diagnosis of 
particular viral infection that is the importance of the inclusion bodies okay so this is all about the inclusion bodies okay one should must know these are sometimes asked as short notes in the university exams so that is a uh, important point to know now coming to the interference these interference are also sometimes asked as short notes in the university exams so uh, you will see the interference in short here interferons are proteinous or glycoproteinous in nature which are released from the virus infected cells okay these are released from the virus infected cells and sometimes also due to the bacterial or protozoan infections now coming to the types of these interferons so in types of the interferons we have first the alpha interferon alpha interferon which is also called as leukocytic interferon because it is produced by leukocytes on viral stimulation next is the beta interferon this is also called as fibroblast interferon why because it is released from the fibroblast on epithelial cells the third one is the gamma interferon why it is ga uh, and what is the other name other name is immune interferon because it is produced by the T lymphocytes on stimulation by antigens so this is not uh, this gamma interferon is not like always secreted during viral infection this gamma interferon may be secreted during other infections as well now how do we remember this alpha beta gamma interferons what are their names and from where they are secreted so that is very simple see here alpha and in alpha you saw a l p h a l l comes in alpha so it is a leukocytic interferon that is secreted from the leukocytes very easy to remember now coming here to beta beta interferon see here in fibroblast you have b that means it is secreted from the fibroblast and it is a fibroblast interferon Again, very important and very easy to remember see here gamma in gamma you have 2 m g a m m a now uh, see here in immune you have 2 m that means it is the immune interferon so by this trick you can remember the different interferons and their source of release also now there are certain properties to differentiate between the interferon alpha beta and gamma the first property is the source so as we have discussed alpha will be from leukocytes beta will be from fibroblast gamma will be from t lymphocytes so that is the immune interferon now induced by what is the source of induction of these interferons so alpha interferons are secreted by induction of the viruses beta also by viruses and gamma interferons by the induction of antigens that means the gamma interferons can also be secreted by the bacterial infections as well now subtypes if you talk about the subtypes the interferon alpha has 20 subtypes interferon beta has only one subtype and interferon gamma has only one subtype if you talk about glycosylation so alpha interferon does not undergo glycosylation but this beta and gamma undergo glycosylation and if you see the functional form of these interferons the alpha interferon exists in the monomeric form while beta in dimeric form b b is the second letter so it is dimeric form gamma alpha is uh, you know alpha is one first letter so it is monomeric form and gamma is tetrameric gamma is tetrameric form see here it looks like four it looks like four so it is tetrameric form this is very easy to remember this uh, difference should must be remembered because sometimes these are asked as differences as well the differences between these interferences are sometimes asked so this important uh, these differences are important to remember now we all know that these interferons inhibit the inhibit the growth of viruses and other infections so how does these interferons act the mechanism what is the mechanism of action of these interferons so the mechanism of in action of these interferons is that they inhibit the host cell protein synthesis 
and which leads to indirectly inhibition of the viral infection to the nearby cells so if the host cells can will not be uh, able to produce the uh, proteins in protein then the uh, then the viral uh, proteins will also not be synthesized and the growth will be reduced or decreased now talking about the preparation of the interferons or simply the forms of interferon so interferons are of two uh, there are two forms of the interferons rather which are the human interferon and the pig interferon pig means polyethylene glycol interferon these human interferons are produced by the dna recombinant technology and these are used for different diseases for treatment of different diseases and these pig interferons are nothing but just the uh, just those interferons which are produced by the dna recombinant technology and they are linked to peg to make them long acting so this is nothing but just the human interference linked with peg that is called as peg interferons and the purpose of making this peg interference is to make the interferons long acting that is just to make the interferons long acting now the uses of interferons what are the uses of interferons so uses of interferons are there are many uses the first one is the topical use like in case of rhinovirus infections in case of genital warts we use interferons topically systemic infection systemically we use it in hepatitis infection like interferon alpha is used in hepatitis b infection that is a systemic use of interferons this interferons has also been synthesized for treatment uh, for you know using cancers like in hairy cell leukemia Kaposi sarcoma we use certain interferons and it has also been used in autoimmune diseases like the multiple sclerosis so it is also used in some autoimmune diseases so what are the uses of interferons these are used topically these are used topically these are used systemically these are used in cancer these are used in autoimmune diseases so these are some of the uses of the interferons this is all about this inclusion bodies and interferons next we will see in the next part of the general virology